Hey guys, it's Celine. Am I recording? Yes, I am recording. I think. <laughs> it should be doing something at the bottom right here. Um, wow. So, I've got about 30 minutes or so before my husband gets here. I've been doing all sorts of things and I thought it was today's Thursday. Um, 24th of June and I haven't been on, uh, you know, a week or actually, which is fine because it's summer anyway, kind of. We don't have such glorious weather here at the moment. I'm also trying to ignite uh, a bit of mugwort here because uh, that'll actually help me get my act together. That is, if it is willing to burn just a little bit. <laughs> Have another go at this. What happens is that the mugwood bits actually fall over on top of my lighter and my lighter goes out. Come on you. Yes. Well, it'll have to do. Anyway. My husband's due for his second Covid shot this afternoon. And I was researching some of that stuff for this morning, for a couple of hours actually. I've been, you know, into viral proteins, and which is not my line of thought normally. I'm interested in um, molecular biology, always have been. But it's kind of, um, it's not always easy to translate that into English, you know, that kind of language. So... The conclusion that I've come to is that the, the problem really is that there are so many different uh, bits of chemistry floating around our system that each have a ton of different operating modes. You know, every molecule does several things, often several dozen things. So that makes it not so easy to keep track of whatever because they're all using Greek names anyway for every bit, all the bits of all the things. The conclusion that I've come to so far, to the extent that I can conclude anything being the utter lay woman that I am, is that um, too much vascular tension, so blood vessel tension, is bad for us. In terms of COVID and or any, you know. So whether that actually translates into blood pressure or not, it depends on the individual, I suppose. I am still kind of pleased to have found this. Because through all the Greek language, you know, digging forward just a tiny bit into... Um, because I've had my own experience with the COVID vaccine so far, I am using uh, a lot of, you know, Shakti energy work, Tumo, Tumo work, you know, to get my own perspective on these kinds of things. And so if you just kind of can say that what I've noticed at least so far is that a lot of articles on the internet say that the uh, the protein that they're actually injecting into us in the vaccine actually has these effects on on restricting constricting blood vessels and blocking the agents that would otherwise create balance in this kind of thing so there's an imbalance definitely um i'm just trying to figure it all out the second shot, I'm kind of worried. My husband's healthy. I shouldn't really worry. I should not be such a pussycat about this. I'll just wait and see what happens. But because he's a workaholic and he just goes on, carries on regardless, even if he's, you know, nearly, nearly officially clinically dead on his feet, you know, he will just continue on running around for people and, uh, you know, on the phone and stressing out. And I just don't believe that he will ever be able to uh, to take care of himself. So that's me right there. The other thing, so I'm going to quit talking about the whole COVID uh, business because yuck, you know. I, th I suppose you've had enough of this 
<laughs> of that uh, just as much as I have. Now we're going. That's what mugwoods, mugwood smoke is supposed to be doing, right? It'll just go out by itself in my big stone fragment here. So the other thing I've been doing, which was rather cool, I'm pretty pleased with myself here as I sit here. So this is what I'm also here to report at the moment. Um, I did a, I sort of, I have these journals, okay? You guys, some of you guys who've seen me on this channel before enough times have seen me uh, talk about these journals. These are my daily or, you know, three times a week or whatever type uh, journals where I just share with myself my whole, all the things. I have just embarked on a new one. This is volume number 29, like it says right there. They've got, all got numbers like that because otherwise there's no way of knowing when, where, or what's happened. About a, volume 15 or so, I started uh, rereading bits, you know, of them and actually making a summary inside volume 16 in the back starting like so, you know, just a page in or so. Uh, I did a summary of my, what I felt were my major events and changes and transformation bits and pieces because there were quite a number of them. And I was badly, I felt, in need of some, you know, recap perspective here. So what was happening? Because there was, there was quite a number of extra layers being added to my life, new dimensions, and I had no clue. I had, from one day to the next, I had no clue what I was doing or why or what the point was or of any of it, really. So I started recapping. I started, you know, at that particular location in that, uh, you know, in that volume, in that um, copy book, you know, that specific book. I did that. So I summarized my years from, I suppose, 13, 2013 to 2018 or thereabouts, 2017. And during, what was it? Um, Monday last, so that's just three days ago, right? I continued doing that from 17 up to now. So I just went through the whole rest of them, which was another 11 um, books going through them just quickly, fairly quickly, stopping only at the moments where I felt like, okay, this is a big one. Then another two or three months happened without anything other than the normal ha ah, and hormones and ranting and whatever, which is <laughs> what goes in here, you know. And um, I, what then happened is I had this summary, which was like three and a half pages by now of those years, of those events. So pretty important for me is the fact that in 20, actually in 2012, I had a, uh, what I've always referred to as a, um, a, a soul retrieval experience through YouTube, where I watched uh, a Brian Weiss regression video where you were invited to go into a past life in order to reconnect with whatever was there that you needed. And at that point, I felt this, I had this sort of a like adventure inside where in the middle of that regression, I actually found a presence in a setting that was completely new to me incomparable, n not possible to compare in terms of what happened to that person, to what I'd gone through in my ho in my own life at that point, or my mother or any of it. It was really old. It was a really old setting. I always talk about this person that I meet at that point as my uh, 14th century gypsy woman gypsy traveler, a woman. And it's taking place in a dungeon somewhere in probably the south of France, in uh, mountains, in a mountain uh, fortress castle kind of a place, 
but it's a, such a long time ago. And there are a couple of um, sort of little hints and inklings that I've gotten since then from engaging with that presence again. The important thing being that this presence felt like me. So that's the really special, really weird, like, wow, well, kind of a, you know, thing about this whole adventure was that I was in a setting with a presence, with a person that the setting was all different and all like I had no clue even where this was or why, what was going on really, except that it was fairly dramatic. And um, the only thing I really noticed at the time, certainly in 2012 of this first regression uh, experience was the fact that she felt like me. She felt like me. <laughs> I don't know what that means. What does that mean? I don't know. It felt like she was me. So there, you know? So I did really nothing much for three more years after that, after that session. I was kind of in a state of like, what am I supposed to be doing here? I had no, no notion of a path forward from there. I just had this experience of this meeting, this separate entity, this separate part of, you know, so at uh, in 2015, in, at the end of August, I had a, a moment where I was again confronted with this sense of not being a complete person myself, which I'd had often before that. You know, it's something that's really scary, like a total sense of dissociation and fear and anxiety and feeling very anxious there was a person who was going to be coming to visit me actually to uh, to look at my cat because she was a an energy healer that I used for my cat at the time and she scared me into asking for help somehow so I in the middle of the night at four o'clock in the morning somewhere I uh, at that point um, asked I suppose a spirit guide of mine that I haven't even done that much with or haven't been that aware of always you know she was just somebody I knew I just felt like okay if anybody can help me sort this out it's her let me just ask her to zip up the zipper between those two halves that are apparently there and just that's what happened that just at that time at the end of August in 2015 by now this energy this consciousness just did this zip action and since then everything's been different so going back to my journaling practice here okay if you're still with me thank you hi <laughs> that's that's really cool i revisited everything that's happened so i had stopped my summarizing because normally what's journaling you know it's an endless stream of blah you know about all sorts of things 90% of it is particularly isn't particularly you know it's consistently about things that you're not comfortable with or whatever in your life you know things like that it isn't really um about information or change or any of it so I'd stopped uh about a year or so year or a year and a half maybe into with my summarizing into this period after 2015. So I'd had no clue because I'd continued, I'd done the summarizing up to the present time at the time, right? And I had no clue uh, what was happening to me, what's changed or any of it. So now this week, I went back to this activity. I completed my summary and then having three and a half pages, which is again too much intel, you know, I summarized that into like one, a, one line a year each, which looks like this. So let me just try to get this to focus a bit. It says here, 13, 14, 15, down the bottom at the, at this side, right? You can see that. So this is, um, 
It says here times 5. Not 5x or x5. It says times 5. Because that's what I actually come to to conclude that this is what happened to my life. My life has expanded five times. It's just a number, really. But it's like a an impression of how much more life I have since my soul retrieval actually took place, since it actually got integrated, since I got this. I still don't get it, you know, this whole self business, but I got it back. I didn't have this level I apparently needed to go. I'm going to be 55 this August, okay? I apparently needed to live with these parents, to be born from these parents with their background, with all their misery, all their misfortune. For decades, I apparently needed to be born in that family and then live in that context, utterly, completely powerless, without courage, without any ever any real sense of connection to them or to anybody else for 48 years it's freaky it it freaks me out as i sit here and talk about it i and then because i don't really feel that that's good enough for me i uh sort of kept with me the ideal that I have of you're supposed to be happy. You're supposed to, you know, feel reasonably good about yourself. You're supposed to be a sovereign human being, whoever you are, whatever that means for you. You can only determine for yourself what that really means, I think. I've determined for myself what it means to be a sovereign human being. Last week I made a video about my self-care practice, which isn't that like that, that huge of a deal. But I had to rethink what does it mean, which is a, the great benefit for me of making videos like this. Making YouTube videos has been crucial because it's meant four years now. I started YouTubing in, uh, in 2018. It's meant... Um, oh, I think it was 2018. I think so. I'm fairly sure. Yes, it was after my husband's, um, you know, vanished twin syndrome business and all that. I think. <laughs> I hope. Because, yeah. <laughs> Let's not mess about with chronology here because I don't care anyway. Which is obvious. Um, being able to put things into words, being able to have a you know, people out there, some of whom, even people who, who don't really comment or do anything about my stuff, you've given me an excuse. You've given me a, a platform. You have given me the platform. If you hadn't been there, you know, if there hadn't been any viewers or any of it, um, I don't really care how big my channel gets at all or if even if my intel and my information, which I think is pretty important and blah, blah, and all that, if it really gets huge, I don't... Uh, what's huge, you know, it means millions of subscribers and millions of nasty comments and all that kind of stuff and trolling and all that stuff. I'm not about that. It, it's just been so therapeutic being able to find my own words for my own situation again and again. Not just today, but next week and next month as well. So that's been really part of the process. Um, I don't know why this lighting thing is happening because now suddenly I'm, it just doesn't find me or something because I've got too much color here and it just <laughs> gets lost in the, uh, in the whole lighting issue, which is fine, I suppose, if you can live with my lighting issues. I have to keep staring at the camera and move around a bit, you know, and then it finds me. <laughs> it's like me finding myself really in this whole jigsaw puzzle of a life. I found, basically, that um, I have been, I was, during this whole soul retrieval and healing process, over these years, I have been 
uh, extracted my person, my myself, my life has been extracted from a matrix of misery and misadventures and misfortune and powerlessness, complete and utter um, of no words, really, victimization, annihilation, narcissism, you, you name it, all the stuff that's on my channel, really. And um, in order for me to become a what I, what I identify with as as is as a positive person, you know, somebody who's actually not a sum of negatives. I'm not this and not that and not enough of such and so, and not uh, I'm not my mother and blah, you know, all those those kinds of things. I'm not my mother, definitely not, or my father. None of none of those people. It's it's really strange. You go to a completely different sense of who you can be I suppose and what you can do and I've been really lucky and I'm completely struck at the combination of utter misfortune and powerlessness from my background and my own level of luck on the other side where I okay I occasionally have had to make decisions to make things better for myself. We all do, that's just part of living, right? So I was really pleased with my summarizing action because I discovered, which is my conclusion for this whole uh, times five kind of an operation, that I have gained from my soul retrieval, I have gained basically a whole lot of courage. And the courage has made it possible for me to engage in compassion and self-compassion, to connect the dots everywhere as far as I can, and to not be, to not let it, you know, destroy me anymore. So yes, I'm a big advocate for, for this type of a soul retrieval kind of a thing, if that's what's really happened. I am not completely sure other than it has opened so many dimensions for me and I have, I suppose I have really learned that there are um, parts of me that I can't explain, which is cool, actually, in a way. So coming all the way, the one, one thing that, I've, that courage has meant a great deal to me was by where um, I've actually engaged with people. Yes, back again. I have very few moments of battery left here, you guys. Um, I've actually, you know, spoken to people from my past, spoken to my dad for a couple of months on the phone. Things that would not have been possible without this courage, you know, that came to me. So uh, it's manifested in a, in a crucial number of ways that are actually practical, where I also decided to break off the contact with my dad again uh, after a while because, you know, I I'd, suppose I'd learned enough from that phase. It was really important to get to experience what he was, uh, you know, how he is in, in his life. So there's a couple of other things, but the courage is really fundamental. So I was going to, I wanted to talk to you more about this, but this is already 24 minutes in, so... Thank you for watching. I'm going to stick my phone on the net, on the uh, juice net uh, right now um, and upload this as it is, I'm afraid. So um, sort of a witchy check-in with uh, <laughs> journaling practice uh, recap moments. Maybe it's of interest, you know. Thank you for watching and for being here on my channel. I love you to pieces, okay? See you next time. Bye-bye.